Hey everybody, Red Mage here. Welcome back to this series where I go through different RPG products that I have and I give them a quick flip through and review. In this one, I'm gonna be going through three fairy tale RPGs for the Cairn system, or the fairy tale like, uh, in the use of the art that they give you and in the sort of just adventures that they're presenting to you. It's very fairy tale like, and I like that theme from time to time, that tone from time to time. But I think all three of these would be really, really good in any sort of fairy tale esque adventure. Or if you're running a game in like Dolmenwood, for example, I think all three of these adventures would be great there. Now they're for the Karen system, but if you know Karen, they're very, very flexible. Karen adventures can really be put into any OSR game. Uh, stats are very simple, and uh, there's nothing really heavily mechanical in any of these. The first one I'm going to be covering is Once Upon a Giant. The second is A Troll in the Woods, and the third is Wands of the Whipperwill Wood. This one's even explicitly a fairy tale module. Now, all three of these were designed for a town, a forest, and a dungeon jam. This was back last summer, 2023. Uh, it was a jam on uh, itch.io, itch.io, however you want to say it. Um, or at least that's where I found all of these. And they're all pay what you want or free. So uh, Once Upon a Giant and uh, Wands of the Whipperwill Wood are pay what you want. Troll in the Woods is just free. So I'll go through them. They're not too long. With uh, the spread, uh, they're you know it's a little bit longer than it looks at first, but uh, but these are all great adventures, and I think they're really fun in that fairy tale tone. I'm I'm as Dolmenwood gets closer and closer to being released, I'm on the lookout for fairy tale themed adventures and things like that. Um, so Once Upon a Giant for use with Karen. Now this is a um, it's a very interesting presentation of the adventure. For the most part, it's clear, but you know for a short document, it's not hard to find what you want. Um, but sometimes things are, uh, you know, spread out over a couple pages and it can be hard to kind of like, you know, connect what's, what's being said to where, <laughs> but, uh, generally it's, it's pretty good. So once upon a time, there was a giant who stalked the land. I mean, it's very fairy tale in its presentation. Um, there's this giant toadstool and on top of it is a forest of stalks, a little village and the giant's castle. And so it's an interesting take on the giant at the top of the beanstalk thing. Instead of a beanstalk, it's a giant mushroom. As you can see here, you have to find a little opening into the mushroom and travel up through it, and then you get to the very top. And when you get to the very top, you're not done yet, because now you are in the forest of stalks, and you have to get through it, and there's a village, and then there's the castle. A toadstool that reached the clouds. So here you have, uh, you know, entries keyed to these different locations, these different starred locations. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, the only way I think to get out is... Um, is to get all the way to eight. So you do have to find your way there. So if you take the wrong path at first, you're gonna to go to kind of a, um, well, I mean, you could go to seven and then end up at eight. But there's a couple path, paths that uh, you know are optional. Basically seven and six are both optional, but you do have to get to eight to kind of get out of this area. So it's not linear in that sense. You, you have some choice, um, but you might miss some stuff. Uh, it's interesting, it's all foresty, mushroomy, um, fungus, there's a mind shroom at the end. Uh, it speaks in a croaky voice, telling characters to leave or become one with the toadstool. Guardian of the secret passage through the toadstool, the mind shroom often takes over the consciousness of those it defeats. Um, interesting. Very interesting. If it gets a critical on you and infects the character with spores, it will grow and sprout into their mind unless they receive extreme healing in a week. Now, extreme healing might be a Karen particular term, I don't know, but you get the point. You gotta have some sort of major healing in order to stop this from, from spreading through you. Once you get through, then you get into the forest with just a few locations. Uh, we get, they're very, very flavorful, but there's not a lot given to you. There's an entrance to the forest, claustrophobic track, a sandy path, a fox, wily and tricky, does not tell the truth, will not fight but run. If cornered, it may attempt to bribe its way to freedom with 3d10 gold. Um, and then you get all the way through six and then into the um, past the village, or past the forest into the town above the clouds. Um, and then there's some markets and stuff you can buy there. There's a church, you can, you can get there, a guardhouse with the captain. And then I cap in a five finger Fred, who is the proprietor there, and then Humus the loot player. Humus. <laughs> it's spelled differently in the name and in the, in the description of him, so, but it's definitely Humus is the idea. <laughs> And then you get the, the fortress itself. Now the fortress itself is basically just this. Gate, walls, tower, and then the giant. So if you wanted to make it more of a dungeon crawl, you'd have to expand it. I get the sense, and I haven't read, I will admit, I haven't spent a lot of time with Karen, but I, I will admit that a lot of Karen doesn't look like really heavy dungeon crawling or anything like that. But 
maybe that's just the adventures I've seen for it. I would probably expand this this particular dungeon into a full-on dungeon. It's very simple as it is, and it would be. A, it feels to me like it would be a bit of an anti be a bit of an anticlimax, if you, especially if you have a really long adventure kind of getting up there. But maybe this would be a one-shot adventure. I don't know. Uh, so it might not be, especially for the Cairn system, which I haven't played. I have to admit. But if you look at the stat blocks, for example, it's very simple, right? Hit points, armor, strength, will, dex, and then the damage that the, the monster does. Very easy to convert to any system. And that's it. And the people of the sand lived happily ever after, if you defeat the giant. So, very, very simple, obviously. I like the art, I like the presentation of it. And it's an interesting take on this idea of a, of a giant toadstool. I think you could easily add it into any game or use it as a one-shot and have a kind of a whimsical adventure. I think that'd be kind of fun. The second is a lot shorter, A Troll in the Woods. This is an adventure for Karen as well. Now, what's interesting about this is that to actually get the adventure, you kind of have to go to the back page first. It gives you a summer synopsis of the, of the adventure. In the village center of Holtzinger, near the well, children play while reciting old rhymes. It gives you a couple rhymes. And then it says, Uncle Tyrion is missing his son, Mail. A villager saw him being taken away by the troll. You are to bring Mail back. And then that's that. And then you go back to the beginning and you get a description of the place with its... You know, with the people who are there and what they're like and what they what they want, perhaps, and some rumors. But you don't actually get the description in the adventure kit on the back page. Now, it's no problem because you have the back page, but still, it's kind of funny to not have that on the first page or on a little title page or something like that. It was they were really you know the the, the producers of this were very interested in minimizing extra space or minimizing you know excess space, and so I think they um they went a little too far there. Perhaps a little thing on the first page to tell you more about this would have been good instead of putting it on the uh, the back cover. But regardless, it's a it's a great um, little town. Again, it's it's interesting and flavorful enough that you could put it into your world. But it's not really particularly. Nothing stands out about it as like whoa, that's kind of a really weird place. So you could fit it into any game. Um, it, it has a much more you know real feel if you want to put it that way, realistic feel of a town than a lot of. Uh, fantasy towns you might get. The woods are pretty generic in one sense. I mean, it's like, yeah, there's woods, there's an old sawmill, there are some uh, goblins out there, there's a boar out in there. But the goblins are interesting, they're root goblins, they're not just there to be um, destroyed, for, for example. Um, two young lovers have secretly sneaked from Holtzinger and are being mocked by these root goblins. If help is provided, they will offer a ring of rodent romance to their saviors. Now, it's interesting, it doesn't specify who will help you, that they. I would actually probably play that the goblins are the ones with the ring of rodent romance, and you can get it from them rather than give it to the uh, the lovers. I don't know why they would have a ring of rodent romance. But it's still it's funny either way. It's an interesting, funny magic item. Uh, rules for getting lost, and then you can run into the noble boar. A lot of these things, I would say... I would probably expand, but the callous green man is just this old tree, but it sounds cool. I might make it like a, a talking tree or something like that. I don't know. There's some stuff that you could make, could expand this to make it more more interesting. As it is, it's pretty straightforward. Um, then there's the troll cave, which I actually really like. I think it's a good dungeon in terms of having a troll lair. There's stuff here that's interesting. There's a hidden burial chamber. The troll itself is kind of, um, oh, I don't know flavorful and, and has some troll speech samples that it says there. Whistling Beethoven's Ninth or something by Rick Astley. It's just, you know, interesting, funny little tidbits there. Um, but the, the, the dungeon itself is just seven rooms. Very straightforward. I like it, though. And I think you could throw this in as a side quest. It's This is the free adventure, so you might as well pick this up because you could just take it and throw it into any kind of fairy tale, or not even fairy tale, just any kind of adventure. If the players, if you don't have anything prepared for the night or you want something interesting to be happening in a small town, you could have a child, child has gone missing, there's a troll rumor out in the wood, you gotta go try to find it. Straightforward, simple, but good. And and I think well done. Um, and then you get the final, the final uh, page. So uh, a troll in the woods, straightforward adventure, but I get it. again, I think it's really solid and I, I think it'd be fun. Fun to include this in a, in a world or something like that. Now, the last of these is, I think, my favorite, and it's the most complex of them all. It's Wands of the Whippoorwill, Whippoorwill Wood, which is a fairy tale module. It's as it's presented. Now, the art throughout is public domain art, but it's really well done, or, or at least it draws you into the flavor and the tone. 
it reminds me of something from like Rackham Wood, if you guys, uh, or Rackham Vale, I should say, if you guys have ever seen that, uh, where the art isn't necessarily exactly what's being described. It's close to what's being described, but it's not exactly what's being described, but it certainly gives you the tone that is very appropriate to the whole book. That's how I find this public, the use of public domain art here. Um, it's a really interesting, like this is great, you know, it draws you right in and it stands out. And the, uh, the writing and the, you know, the font choices and all that fit in with the, the look of like, you know, the old fairy books by Andrew Lang or something like that. And I think that, that works really, really well. Once upon a time, this one also begins that way. Uh, so you have what's going on, and essentially you have this wood where the fairies have been kind of the last bastion of fairy life where the fairies live. And there are two wands, the rock wood and the tangle wood. And these two wands uh, basically are in the hands of the fairies, and it's how they're keeping their power still there. So the humans want it, and the fairies want to keep it. Uh, and then there's some rumors there, and then the quest. Who's the quest giver? You can give the Bale of John, who is on behalf of the fairy colony. So you could be working with the fairies or for the fairies, or you can be working on behalf of the Countsmen and working with them. And that, I think, makes this fit into a world like Dolanwood. Because there you have, you can be a fairy yourself, you can be working with the fairies, you can be interacting with them. They're not just sort of this other wild, you know, NPC force out there or, or villain force or something like that, right? I mean, they're, they're much more interactable in a world like Dolmenwood. And that seems to be the assumption here. And then there are a few other, right? You can be just, you show up lost and you stumble into these adventures. Or you have a, no one hired you, you came here too. And then there's a few options. Investigate the ruins, serve as mercenaries, uh, find a loved one, or attend a wedding. Really cool because there's, uh, all these things are happening around and there's reasons to go investigate the different parts of this, which it turns out it's actually a hex crawl or more like a, not quite a hex crawl. You'll see what I mean. It's more of a, not a point crawl. It's more of like a triangle crawl. <laughs> Uh, travel in the wood, rules for travel in the wood, um, and the different watches and things like that. You could use your system of choice here. You wouldn't have to use this one in particular, but it, it just sort of assumes that you will. So this is what I mean. It's more of a triangle crawl, right? <laughs> you have um, a diamond, and the wood has been fit into that diamond. And it is not necessarily... Um, it's not necessarily generic enough that you could put it into any world, but you could, again, with some work, fit this into Dolmenwood by using the ideas rather than the actual locations as they're described here. But you could run this straight up, and, and the locations seem very interesting. There's the outskirts, you get the crag moors, uh, and, and all of them have something kind of interesting happening. There's no empty or boring spots, or at least uh, nothing that I found to be boring. I thought they were all quite interesting. Uh, Glen Morrow, some of these, there's a couple dungeons in here. Um, Garnock's Tribute Place, the town of Udale, Summer Palace, the Bailiwick of the Swall of Swallowtail, the Prytan Ruins, the Shimmering Springs, the Golden Groves. I guess there are empty hexes, which are just forest hexes, but you can you know, roll on those random encounter tables and things, as we'll see. The factions. When I first read this, I have to admit I didn't notice the F there. I just thought it said action, actions, and I was like, uh, I don't understand how these are actions, but I'm just stupid. Uh, factions, and you have the different characters or the different NPCs that are sort of in charge of the different groups, or or maybe they're just individuals, but they're sort of, uh, you know, important enough to merit their own position on the faction chart. And then there's a faction relationships table, which you kind of have to, you know, turn your head if you're going to read it like this. But it's really cool. I like this a lot. And then you have the uh, random generation on the right, or not random. The Knights of Pritania are not random. But then you have the role of bandit and the role of fairy tables, and I love those. You can come up with your own bandits and fairies. You can read straight across, or you can uh, generate them. And this is this would be great to add into the tables from something like Dolmenwood. You have encounters for morning, midday, eventide, and dark. I think it's really cool, and it's not a curved table. It's just a flat table, which means you're more, just as likely to get any one of these, which makes uh, makes sense because they're all interesting. I think they're they're all well designed in that I think any one of them would be a fun adventure or a fun encounter to run into. So you can either have them, you know, this would make even those blank hexes, those few blank hexes interesting. And some of the ones in the dark are, are kind of creepy, like the Waterman. That's really creepy. There's a Beastery. You got Bale of John, the Black Yew, the Bogarts, Bramble Blights. Uh, and, and, and again, these are very simple. So you could take, these are Karen stat blocks, but you could take them and add them into any game. There's enough here to 
generate your own very, very easily. House spirits, just brigands, unicorns, watermen. And if you used, of course, if you used uh, Dolmenwood, then you could use the creatures from that easily enough. And here are, the, here are the two wands that you can get into. The wands of Rockwood and the wand of Tanglewood. What they do and what happens if they're found and then where they are. The clues to their location. Uh, there's the clue, which is the location, the map, and the key. And how to get them. And it's very cool, right? So let's look at the, the, the wand of Rockwood. One, the location. By altering the lay of the land, Rockwood inadvertently influences the run of the water as well. Look to the place where earth and water become one to the rhythm that drives their bond. That's the clue to the location. And the clue is known by uh, Don, 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 I don't know how to say that, Don, I suppose, Don, <laughs> Dougal. Um, and then you can, solving it leads you to Glen Morrow. So if you can figure out that sort of riddle, you go to Glen Morrow. The map. Rockwood was the creation and responsibility of the Moon Fairy. The Moon Fairy, unlike his brother, thought pragmatically and feared that after his death, the location of the wand would be lost. Many know that he left a record of the wand's refuge, but none know where it is. A clue known by the Library of Billiboro, which is on page 21, um, on an ancient scroll, and solving it leads to the Moon Fairy Medallion, which is on page 30, so we'll go to that. And then the key, which is, listen to the rhythm of the earth and the brook, which conductor sense the tempo between them. What do they look like? Clue known by engraving on stone above Glen Morrow. You, you see the engraving above the stone if you go to Glen Morrow. And that solving it leads to the perigee or peregree stone, which is on page 30. And then you use that, you get the Wand of Rockwood. And the same thing is true, or not the same thing, but a same a similar process as the Wand of Tanglewoods. The players have to sort of investigate this. They have to use, they have to talk to NPCs. They have to go investigate the library. They have to go to a dungeon. It's not just simple. Uh, oh, here it's, no, right here. And we'll go pick it up. There's a quest involved to get either one of the wands or both. Rival parties. So there are rival adventuring parties that are out there. Sir Joliet and Sir Peric. I mean, I guess they're not really adventuring parties. They're just rival parties. Sir Joliet is trying to get it. Uh, the wand Sir Peric is trying to get it. The brigade is trying to get it. And the company is trying to get it. Now, that's really, I think that's all the information you get about the brigade or the company. You can go back to the beastery. They're not in here. Um, so I think you'd have to come up, kind of come up with your own. But you easily could, just a you know, rival adventuring party. That's pretty cool. And then you get breakdown of the different villages, or, um, yeah, the different locations. You get Billiboro, uh, Grotenstadt, Bridgetown, Hightown, Lowtown, Britannia Point. Uh, there's the Empty Cradle, which is, uh, yeah. The rumors are true, at least partially. A small, dissident group of company rebels have stolen a human baby in the hopes of inflicting conflict between the two realms. Xena is not happy with this turn of events and believes the humans themselves may have elicited this gamble. Gambit. In exchange for rescuing the child and investigating further, Xena is prepared to award an enchanted map that changes with the wood. The human baby was last seen near the town of Udale. Which is um, location five. There's a bridal party adventure. There's a lost pride adventure. Or these are sort of like quest sort of things there. And then you have the dungeon location. So you have Glen Morrow, which is a very simple dungeon, but I really, really like that map of the dungeon. It's super cool. It looks like something out of, I don't know, um, Secret of Kells or something like that. I like that. But it's pretty pretty simple. You go all the way down uh, to the east entrance, or you, sorry, you go all the way down to the aquifer, I should say. Uh, and there's stuff in here. There's a honey clasp ring if you want to go all the way down. So looking to the bottom is a honey clasp ring, or a honey clasp ring. Glenmore will be steering. Then there's the Lover's Oak, which is a giant pair of oaks that have grown together, and you can see how big they are relative to a person. And the Wand of Tanglewood is hidden in the topmost canopy. It's great. So you've got to climb up the, uh, climb up the uh, oak, deal with, there's a branch bridge, there's a <laughs> delphin bird's nest, fungi storage, dire dew den, there's an overseal's hall, a root entrance, uh, branch harvesting, the canopy. Yeah, it's great. Definitely a great uh, dungeon. Climbing up a giant tree with a wand up on the top. Super cool. With the, there's a rule summary for Karen, how, how the game system works, along with the magic items in this particular game. There's the perigee. It was perigee, I thought, so perigree. It was a mistake. So perigee stone, um, tracker's tongue, the song of swallowtail, moon fairy medallion, the honey clasp ring, and there's a lot of cool, interesting little tidbits that I skip past really quickly. But like, for example, in the there's a there's a stream that runs through the forest. It's very fairy tale like or very um, fairy magic esque. If you get both a fingernail and a toenail wet, then you shrink down to fairy size. 
if you're a human-sized person. And that would be a great little like fairy bit of fairy magic to use in this game, or in any game, really. I think that's kind of cool. And then the last page is a gorgeous piece of art there. Again, public domain, but really cool. So, Wands of the Whipper Will, Whipper Will, I can't say that, Whipper Will Wood, <laughs> is a fantastic adventure. And I think it's my favorite of the three. Um, it has the, well, it's certainly the most sizable. It's certainly the most fairy tale like, and I think it's the most uh, particular. It's the one I, I would probably be most tempted to run. It's also, I think, the hardest to add into any game because it's so particular. You kind of have to run this on its own. You could certainly fit this into a Dolman Wood world. It would be a little bit trickier, but you could do it. And, um, and you know what's interesting is the more that I read through Karen Adventures and Karen Modules, the more I see how a lot of them seem to fit with the tone of Dolman Wood. Um, I'm definitely going to keep looking into Karen Adventures. There's a ton on Ichio and there's a ton elsewhere that you can find. And um, I don't know, there's a lot of really good ones. Really good ones that fit. I mean, and a lot of them are very short, just a page or two even. A lot of a couple page adventures for Karen. So I'm going to keep looking through these uh, Karen Adventures because um, I've been reading through a lot of Shadow Dark Adventures recently and I've been <laughs> disappointed by a lot of them, I have to say. But the uh, the Karen adventures that I've been reading recently have been all been very interesting to me. Obviously, some of these are uh, better than others. I think A Troll in the Woods is, is not as, as, as interesting to me. It's pretty straightforward. The town isn't all that fairy tale like But I like the dungeon, and I think it's fun. And it's certainly, you know, you just throw it into an adventure, and it's all good. But Once Upon a Giant is quite interesting, and I think Wands of the Whipper Will, Whipper Will Wood is really cool. Really cool. So I hope you guys have found this to be interesting. Um, I'll put links below to where you can get them. Uh, again, uh, Wands of the Whipper Will Wood and Once Upon a Giant are pay what you want. A Troll in the, uh, a troll in the Woods is free. Alright guys, I will see you in another video.